Don't come to my daughter's wedding, you monster. You don't want to ruin Lisa's wedding. And you don't need to know when it's happening. George got carried away and said such a thing. It was like when he didn't tell me about this cool open day. How long will he keep repeating the same thing? He trembled with anger. Got it. But I replied briefly, knowing it's pointless to argue with a drunk. And in my mind, I whispered, you'll regret this. George hasn't realized that things are not the same as before. Still in a good mood, he fell asleep snoring. My name is Mae Richards. I'm a 55-year-old housewife. Currently, I work part-time at a local factory, living with my husband, George. We have one daughter. Her name is Lisa. She's living on her own while working as a professional after graduating from college. I'm really happy that she has grown up to be such a considerate and good girl, often checking in on us. As a parent, it makes me incredibly happy, but as a woman, I have a certain complex. It's the large burn scar on my face. Sometime after I got married, I encountered an accident scene. While waiting at the crosswalk, a car collided right in front of people on the opposite side. Gasoline started leaking from the car, and it seemed about to ignite any moment. The area turned chaotic. Then, I found myself instinctively running towards the scene. Are you okay? Recklessly, I dove into the accident site and helped someone who couldn't move. But then, I saw flickering orange flames before me. I honestly thought it was over, that I had to escape too. But the cries of a girl trapped under a bicycle brought me back to my senses. I couldn't give up just like that. I grabbed the crying child's hand, rescued her, and handed her to another pedestrian before running back to the scene. Then, I carried an old man who had fallen and twisted his leg to safety. At that moment, there was a small explosion with a loud bang. Perhaps I was in the wrong place because I took the full brunt of the blast and fell down. When I came to, my face felt hot and the old man yelled, You alright? I'm okay. Is anyone else hurt? Looks like everyone's evacuated. You need to get to the hospital. I felt relieved at the old man's words. Miraculously, everyone had finished evacuating. Even the driver had managed to escape, and despite the severity of the accident, there were no casualties. I went to the hospital. The blast of hot air I had faced caused a burn on my face. It wasn't serious, but a large scar remained on my exposed face. Even knowing what I did was right, the burn mark in such a visible place bothered me. According to the doctor, my skin was red and raw, and the mark would remain like a bruise, never fading. George encouraged me. Don't worry about scars on your face. Be glad you're alive. I felt happy to be married to George. Indeed, he was right. I couldn't wallow in self-pity forever. I returned to my part-time job after a while and resumed my normal life. Soon after, I discovered I was pregnant. I was delighted and immediately told George. George, we're having a baby. Really? I was sure George would be happy. However, after his initial surprise, George's expression fell. 
What's wrong? Well. Feeling a bit anxious, I asked him. I've been thinking, maybe it's too soon for a baby? What? We've only been married a little over a year, right? Maybe we should enjoy some more time as a couple. George's words hit me hard. Sure, couple time is important. But our child's life is obviously more precious. George never said to have an abortion because he would be the bad guy. However, I was angry at his phrasing which led me to abortion. That was our first big fight. We didn't speak for a while, and the house was eerily quiet. A few days later, while in the shower, I fought it over. I couldn't go on like this, but I also couldn't give up on our baby. So, I decided to approach George and make him understand. Resolved, I got out of the shower and headed to George's bedroom when I heard his voice. I don't know how to say this. I heard George's voice and stopped in my tracks. It seemed he was on the phone with his mother. They were talking about the baby. George continued the call, unaware that I was listening. A mother with a face like that. That would be sad for the child, wouldn't it? I was planning to divorce eventually. But having a kid now is a huge mistake. I froze when I heard those words. She got that way helping others. So I can't dismiss her. And honestly, I think it's admirable. But think about what it's like for me. Having to live with her, huh? Tears began flowing from my eyes without me realizing it. After all his kindness, to think he felt this way behind my back. If he wanted a divorce because of my scar, he should have done it back then. Quietly, I left the room. And then, I packed my things and left the house. But my parents' house is far away. With nowhere to go, I found myself in a park, wondering what to do next. Anyway, I'll head back to my parents' house in the morning. I'll need to spend the night somewhere since I've already showered and removed my makeup. Feeling embarrassed to go anywhere with my face like this was a new and shaming experience. Me. That's when I heard George's voice. He had noticed I left the house and came looking for me. Instinctively, I grabbed my bags and tried to flee, but he caught up quickly. What are you thinking, leaving the house at this hour? George yelled at me. Come on, we're going home. He gently took my hand. I pulled away. What do you mean? You're ashamed of me, aren't you? George looked shocked at my words. The kid would be better off not being born, right? If that's what you think, you should have just said so. Tears streaming down my face, I pleaded with him. Hearing this, George sighed in frustration. That's true. But did you really accept that? You always think only of yourself. Think about our child, or even me, for once. Our arguments continued without resolution. I thought that if I backed down, things might settle, but I just couldn't bring myself to give up on having a child. I even considered raising the child as a single parent. However, when I mentioned divorce, George would say things like, if we divorce, I'll take custody. How could you, with that face, take our child to kindergarten or school? Which completely shattered my confidence. In the end, my desire to free myself was outweighed by my wish to have and raise the child. 
feeling apologetic for being a mother with such a face, yet relieved and moved by the beauty of my daughter's face, I successfully became a mother. My daughter, named Lisa, grew up healthy and happy. George quickly became completely smitten with her charming smile. Despite having tried to persuade me to give up on having baby, he would say things like, Meeting Lisa is the happiest moment of my life, which left me with mixed feelings of anger and joy. As a father, he was very involved with Lisa. However, his treatment of me worsened over time due to his excessive love for Lisa, and the difference in his behavior became more apparent. I will go to Lisa's kindergarten event. That's better, right? George attended all the kindergarten events and even did all the regular pickups and drop-offs. Eventually, he acted as though he was trying to keep me from going to the kindergarten, not even telling me about the open days. Yet when Lisa got sick and the kindergarten called, he would say, May, maybe you should show your face at the kindergarten once in a while. We owe them that, which was just exasperating. George seemed oblivious to his own mean-spirited behavior, making me doubt his character. Despite having such a father, Lisa grew up well. Lisa, I love mom. Whenever she opened her mouth, that's what she would say. George seemed displeased with Lisa's words, but he never said anything against her, and thanks to Lisa, our home was always filled with smiles. As Lisa grew, she started asking for me to come to the kindergarten. Mom, I want you to come to the next gymnastics open day. There's an open day. Yeah. I was praised for being good at forward rolls. Watch me. It seemed Lisa was doing some gymnastics, and she happily started doing forward rolls on the carpet. Watching her, George opened his mouth with a smile. That's true. Lisa is really good. It's great that Mom could see this. Yeah. So... Come and see me on the open day. No, too bad. Mom has to work the day. Dad will go instead. Lisa, show Mom at home instead. That made me furious. I hadn't seen any notice about the open day. George probably heard from her teacher, we've put a notice in the handout and took it out himself. I didn't know the schedule for the open day or whether I had to work. If Lisa wanted me there, I could have taken the day off, but he told her right from the start that I couldn't come, which was just terrible. As expected, Lisa's face fell when she heard George's words. Seeing her sparkling smile turn sad, my heart ached. Don't make that face. Mom wants to come too, but it can't be helped. Let's make sure Mom can come next time. Okay. Lisa replied reluctantly to George's words. That night, after Lisa had gone to sleep, I spoke to George. I didn't know about the open day. I could have taken time off. This is awful. Don't be so mad. I thought if I told you, You'd want to go? But Lisa wants me there, doesn't she? I said this angrily to George. Tears began to well up. Lisa asked me to come for the first time. I desperately wanted to make that happen for her. Calm down. I hate to say this, but what will Lisa's friends think if they see your face? What if they get scared and Lisa gets bullied because of it? That's... You're saving other people's lives and ruining your own family. George spat out those words and left the living room, quitting his evening drink. 
Left alone, I broke down and cried. Regretting for the first time that I had been involved in that accident. The same pattern continued afterward. Even when Lisa was in elementary school, George attended the open day and I wasn't allowed to go. Only at the sports day, I was able to sneak in to see her because there were so many people that nobody could recognize me as Lisa's mother. That was the only school event I was ever involved in. As she became a teenager, even George was told not to come by her, and ultimately, I couldn't properly watch her enjoy her school life. I resigned myself to thinking it was my fault. Dad was always there, but Mom, you're just not interested in me, right? Lisa seemed to think so, gradually distancing herself from me. I felt as if I had lost my only emotional support, enduring painful days. Thankfully, Lisa continued to thrive, becoming a high school student, a college student, and then a working adult. Luckily, her rebellious phase ended in high school due to a certain event, and now we are as close as we used to be. And now, Lisa was about to get married. Her partner was a wonderful man named Sean Gray, five years her senior. Sean was the cousin of Lisa's best friend Mary, who she had known since high school and lived nearby, leading to their dating after several meetings. My boyfriend wants to come over to greet you. George responded to Lisa saying that, Of course. I have a duty to see what kind of man he is. Lisa and I just smiled wryly at his pompous attitude. Lisa also called out to me. Mom, you'll be there too, right? Of course. I'm looking forward to meeting Sean. Really? George interrupted our cheerful conversation. You shouldn't be there. What if it leads to a breakup? What do you mean? Why would it lead to a breakup? You know, with a mother who scored like. What if he finds out? George was tough on me but timid when it came to Lisa. He still tried to keep me away from Lisa's boyfriend because he didn't want me out. I don't think that's the case. Lisa said to me in a hesitant voice, seeking reassurance. I wanted to meet Sean, but I thought if I insisted on my way now, it might upset George and cause problems during the marriage meeting. So I thought it best to stay silent and step back. I said to Lisa, All right, I'll step aside then. Mom. Lisa's face fell just like it used to. But I smiled at her reassuringly, conveying that it would be okay. The meeting to introduce the families was a great success. George liked Sean, saying in his usual tactless way, I'm glad Lisa's fiancé isn't some ugly, senseless jerk. He was in a very good mood. It seems Sean's parents also came along and even shared a drink together. George was happy throughout the evening. Perfect parents. And they seem to like me, too. Now that Lisa is getting married, she won't be mistreated. It would be tough if she were the child of someone ugly and disgraceful. His comment included a sarcastic jab about it being good that they hadn't met me which was quite unpleasant. It seems they even discussed the wedding plans. It was supposed to be just a greeting, but we managed a perfect meetup and even talked about the wedding. Oh, when is it? Don't come to your daughter's wedding, you monster. You don't want to ruin Lisa's wedding, do you? You don't need to know when it is. George got carried away and said such a thing. 
It was like when he didn't tell me about this cool open day. I trembled with anger, wondering how long he would keep repeating the same behavior. Got it. But I replied briefly, knowing it was useless to argue with a drunk. And in my heart, I muttered, you'll regret this. George hadn't realized that things were not the same as before. Still in a good mood, he soon fell asleep snoring. Then came the day of the wedding. George was nervously preparing from the morning, saying, I'll take pictures for you. Did he think I would be grateful for that? I just turned away, unimpressed. What's up? Don't soak. This is all for Lisa's happiness. If you step back, everyone will be happy. Just stay quietly at home today, okay? With that, George headed off to the wedding venue. I watched him leave silently, but the idea of just staying home quietly as George suggested didn't sit right with me, so I headed out to a particular place. As I was nearing my destination, my phone rang. It was George. Probably to brag, I fought, as I sighed and put away my phone. But then, the phone kept ringing incessantly. It was too annoying for me. Hello. I answered with frustration as the calls wouldn't stop. On the other end, George was panicking. I listened intently, wondering what was going on. Where are you? What are you doing right now? Why are you panicking? It's an important wedding day. Don't call me now. Wait. Don't hang up. Gay's a big problem at the wedding. George said frantically. His rush confused me, and I frowned, asking for clarification. What do you mean? Just come here quickly. I hung up the phone but started walking unhurriedly. Then I walked through the door of my destination. Hi, May. Mary, it's been a while. There was Lisa's best friend, Mary. The wedding has started. Mary greeted me with a smile. Yes, this was the venue where Sean and Lisa's wedding was taking place. Lisa had told me, no matter what George says, make sure you come. If I didn't show up, Lisa's friend Mary had even promised to come and fetch me. That's why, no matter what George said, I had decided to come today. If I showed up, George might be embarrassed, but I didn't care anymore. If anything was said, I was ready to snap back. That was my mindset. And as I arrived at the venue with Mary and peeked into the hall. But I was surprised when I looked inside. There was George, right now in the spotlight. What's happening? When I asked, she pointed at Lisa with a smile. Lisa spoke through the microphone. Dad, explain to everyone why mom isn't here, in your own words. Well, uh. I was taken aback by her words. Mary, what's going on? What is this situation? I asked Mary again. Actually, Lisa has been planning this long before she even started dating Sean. Mary said, smiling reassuringly at my confusion. The story goes back several years. Lisa hid her rebellious teenage years in middle school. Added to that, her frustration exploded because I had never attended a single school event, creating a big rift between us. George just watched gleefully and did nothing to mend our relationship. 
I was troubled by my relationship with Lisa and lived in a state of depression. However, a turning point came. When Lisa became a high school student, she said, I want to bring a friend home. A friend, of course, your friends are welcome. They planned to study together from morning until evening. This was a first. However, while I was happy, I was also self-conscious about the scars on my face. But, maybe it's better if I'm not at home? When I hinted at this, Lisa nonchalantly said, it doesn't really matter. Encouraged by her words, I decided to go all out and prepare lunch and cake. Then the day arrived. Mary, this is my mom. The girl called Mary looked at my face and widened her eyes for a moment in surprise. I thought she was bothered by the scars, but I smiled kindly. Mary, right. I'm Lisa's mom, May. We have similar names, don't we? Yes, I'm Mary Murphy. Nice to meet you. Let's study. My room is this way. Lisa led a bewildered Mary to her room. Feeling I had made Lisa and Mary uncomfortable, I was disheartened. What if this caused a rift between Lisa and Mary? I wondered whether I should bring them tea or perhaps it would be better to leave the house. But just then Lisa, who had just gone into her room, yelled out. Mom! Wondering what was going on, I hurried to Lisa's room. There I found them, wiping away tears while laughing. What's going on? Why are you both crying? Then Lisa said, Mom, is it true that you got your facial scar from saving someone in an accident? What? I was taken aback by her sudden question. I had told Lisa that my burn was due to my own carelessness. Because George had said, don't say it was from helping someone. I agreed with him. I never thought it was anything special. I thought it wasn't something worth mentioning. But somehow, Lisa knows about it. While watching the serious faces of Mary and Lisa, I said, Yes, but why? It's true. Mary spoke before Lisa. My grandpa was the one you saved back then. Seriously. Mary continued. Her grandfather had the accident before Mary was born. Facing a burning car and unable to move because he had twisted his ankle, a young woman had come to his rescue. Later, when things calmed down, he wanted to return the favor but couldn't find her because the police wouldn't give out her personal information. All he knew was that she had gotten a facial burn at that time, and her name was May. The whole family thanked her for saving his life. My grandpa passed away last year, but he told me that story many times. I never imagined it was Lisa's mom. In our family, you're like a phantom hero. Mary said, wiping away tears. That's probably why she looked surprised and confused when she saw my name and scars. It was a miraculous meeting, and tears flowed from my eyes. I'm glad you became friends with Lisa. From then on, Lisa stopped keeping her distance from me. Mary frequently visited our home, and Lisa and I were also invited to Mary's home, where we all became close. Actually, I was already acquainted with Mary's cousin Sean and Sean's parents. I never expected Sean and Lisa to get married, but because of this connection, there was no reason for me to oppose their marriage. Later, 
Lisa realized that the reason I hadn't come to her kindergarten and school was because of George. Though he might have been a good father to her, she sensed from his words and actions that he was belittling me. Thinking she wouldn't be able to have me at her own wedding? With that in mind, Lisa hid a voice recorder in the living room. The recorder captured George mocking me, which infuriated Lisa. That's why she decided to play it during today's opening movie. George must have been in a frenzy when he saw it, which is why he called me in panic. And with the end of the phone call and the opening movie, I ended up in the spotlight. Well. George was shrinking in front of the accusatory stares of Lisa and the guests, sweating profusely. I always wanted mom to come. I'm shocked to find out dad has always been telling her not to. Lisa, I did it thinking of you. For me, whoever asked you to do that? Lisa exploded in anger, yelling at George. Lisa, calm down, okay? Today is your wedding day. June and all of Sean's relatives are here, too. George said, forcing a smile. At that moment, Sean's father stood up. Is what Lisa's saying true? We were told May couldn't join because she was sick. It's true. She had a cold. And even today, she's got a stomachache. She always falls ill at crucial times. Just then... May, let's go. Mary grabbed my hand and led me into the venue. Though I was pulled in, I walked proudly behind her. Mom? Lisa saw me and smiled happily. Why are you? George's voice carried over the microphone. With all eyes on me, George fumbled again through the microphone. My wife's facial burns were due to carelessness. She looks like a monster. But Sean and Sean's relatives don't be scared. George was laughing, but I did not hide my face. For Lisa, who had gone to such lengths for me, I decided not to be ashamed of my scars anymore. Even as everyone in front of me was exposed to his cold stares, George still treated me like a monster. Sean's parents and all the relatives were trembling with anger. If I may use Mary's words, I was their phantom hero. It felt proud to have people stand up for me and be angry on my behalf. Just fix this situation. Just one word from you clearing my innocence would settle this. Say that I never told you not to come. George turned away from the microphone and came over to whisper in my ear. How absurd. How can I clear suspicions when I'm not innocent? I took the microphone. I apologize for the disturbance. I said, bowing deeply. Just as Lisa said earlier, I could never attend Lisa's kindergarten or school events because my husband wouldn't allow me. Hey, you fool. George turned pale at my words. If being worried that Lisa might get bullied because of my facial scars meant I couldn't say anything. Mom. But Lisa was meeting Mary and Sean changed my life for the better. George looked at Sean as she said this. Sean nodded with a smile. The scars I have were acquired long ago at the scene of an accident while helping others. The scars were significant, and there were days I regretted being involved in that accident. However, discovering that the person I helped was Lisa's best friend Mary and Sean's grandfather reassured me that my actions were not mistaken. George looked stunned by my words. 
my husband has said harsh things to me, like I did something foolish or wasted my life by saving someone else. But I realize now more than ever that I wasn't wrong, and I am endlessly grateful to Lisa, Sean, Mary, and their families for accepting me with my scars. Please continue to look after Lisa. I bow deeply again. The applause erupted from the venue. I apologized once more for involving everyone in this, and as I stepped away from the spotlight, the host smoothly transitioned us back into the wedding. May, please don't leave. Sean's father urged me to stay. Thanks to him, I was able to witness one of Lisa's most important moments for the first time. The heartless monster should leave. Lisa. I can no longer see you as my father. Lisa kicked George out of the wedding. George, devastated by the words from his only beloved daughter, sat on a bench outside the venue, weeping bitterly. I approached George. Do you now understand how it feels to be told not to attend your daughter's important events? I thought it would lead to some reflection, but George's response was far from what I expected. It's a wedding. Don't equate it with past the open days. It was a complete misdirect of his anger. Hearing this, I was appalled by George's lack of remorse. Who told you not to come to the wedding? And remember, school events were important only once. George was silenced by my stern tone. Perhaps I should regret having obeyed George's words all this time. This wedding, which made me realize this, is something I will never forget. I returned to the venue alone and watched until the end. It was a beautiful ceremony. Tears streamed down my face as Lisa, from her bridal seat, frequently smiled at me, ensuring I was there. It was as if she was a little child again, checking if her mother was present. I'm so happy you are here. She told me at the end of the ceremony, and I cried again. I must have made her feel lonely so many times. Though regrets surged, I resolved not to dwell on the past. From now on, I will be there for all of Lisa's important moments. I promised that. After the ceremony, George's parents and relatives, who were previously unaware of his misdeeds, came to me to apologize. My parents were furious. Especially my father, who said, you can come back home anytime if you decide to divorce. It feels odd to rely on my parents at this age, but their kindness was overwhelming. Perhaps if I had consulted them sooner, my future could have been different, but I believe this is the best and happiest present I could have created for myself. The story didn't end there. One of Sean's friends who attended the wedding worked at the same company as George, and news of the incident spread quickly through George's company. George, who pretended to be a family-oriented man but treated his wife monstrously, is now being bad-mouthed as a monster man. He seems to have no place in the office and now has lunch alone. Sean's friend reported this to me through Sean. I wish he could understand a little of what it feels like to have no one to talk to. I replied with that remark, and it seems no one else wants to speak with George now. I thought to myself, serves him right. I then prepared myself and told George I wanted a divorce. Divorce? Isn't that a bit drastic? You were planning to divorce me when I got burned, weren't you? I'm just saying what you wanted. 
That's... George refused to accept the divorce. He was probably a little scared, being alone at work, shunned by relatives and his daughter, and now me leaving as well. But I was determined not to be swayed by George any longer. The only thing you can do for me now is to let me be happy by divorcing. Having such a father might even mean Lisa gets mistreated. Cut ties with both me and Lisa. George slumped his shoulders at my words. Then I'll stay away from Lisa. So please reconsider the divorce. He pleaded with teary eyes, but I was firm in my decision. Lisa has asked me to live with her. I'll be moving out tomorrow. I left him clinging and slapped the filled out divorce papers in front of him. George truly ended up alone. Now, even the neighbors keep their distance from him. Lisa told me she saw him buying a ready-made dinner at the supermarket, looking dejected after work. He let you handle all the hardships and just enjoyed the good parts. Now it's his turn to struggle a bit. Indeed, George can't clean, do laundry, or cook. The sin of not cherishing his wife was greater than he imagined. I am now living happily with my daughter and her husband. Lisa is pregnant and will become a mother next fall. My goal is to be a mother like you. Lisa said lovingly as she caressed her belly. When my baby is born, let's go to the kindergartens all events together. What a wonderful invitation that was. I may be getting older and my tear ducts looser, but I nodded again, holding back tears. I can't get back the past, but I'm sure the future holds happiness. I've truly felt that, 